Quinton, that's his fucking name. Charles, not Charles, it's Quinton. Tarantino. I thought it was Quentin. I don't even know if I'm looking at the camera right now. I think you are. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So today, I want to do a quick video about sleeping in the van and a few little hacks that I've come up with to make sleeping way, way, way better. So we're just chilling in here right now. Taylor's studying for her nursing NCLEX and I'm just kind of hanging out. I thought I'd do this video. So what I have here is the Mindfold face mask. And this has probably been the biggest upgrade when it comes to sleeping in the van for me ever. So this thing, it makes everything completely dark. And that's been one of my biggest complaints in the van is I like to sleep in pitch black, you know, that's how I sleep best. And light comes in in a lot of different places. The Max Air Fan obviously lets a whole lot of light in, whether it's open or closed. I've sort of showed that in my Max Air Fan video. We do have the white exterior Max Air Fan, which lets in even more than the darker one. Now, one of you guys actually mentioned in that video an idea would be to insulate the inside of the Max Air fan or paint it like a matte black. And I thought that was actually a really good idea. It's probably something I consider doing at some point. But there's still going to be some light coming in from the fan. And we get a little bit of light in from the curtains as well. And even just like, there's some like gaps in the doors. You know, light's always coming in in some way, shape or form. So yeah, I picked this up off Amazon. I'll probably put a link in the description if you're interested. It's like 14 bucks or something the Mindfold. And what I like so much about this is a lot of eye patches that I've worn before, eye masks I've worn before, they like rest right over your eyes. And I really don't like that feeling, how it's like you can feel it on your eyelashes and your eyebrows, you can't open your eyes. I really dislike that. And the good thing about this one is it has probably over a half inch, maybe like almost three quarter inch of foam. And then it has a plastic cover over the foam so i can actually i don't know if you how well you can see that that's the back of it but i can actually have my eyes open while i have the mask on which is like really really good so yeah um definitely recommend this it has really good adjustment and stuff as well and when i put that on if it's sitting correctly which it's pretty easy to get it to a nice fit it's pitch black. I can't see anything. I can have my eyes open if I want to, you know, blink or something, which especially when I'm first going to bed, I like to be able to open and readjust my eyes, you know, that sort of thing. And again, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I can open them, which has been great. I found that getting up in the morning, it's really good because we go to bed around 10. So it's usually dark when we go to bed, but we wake up after it's become light. So it's really good for that too. And so I can literally be napping at like nine in the morning still. And it feels like, it still feels late. It still feels like it's really early before sunrise. I've had quite a few times where I've had this on and I've thought it was really early in the morning and I've taken it off and it's been really bright. So one, one thing I would recommend when you take this off, like take it off like five, 10 minutes before you're gonna actually open your eyes. And that way, a bit of that sort of redness that you see when you when it's like sunny out will start coming in and it'll help adjust your eyes to being open for like the sunlight. There's been a few times where I've had to like rush to the toilet. So I've just like whipped it off and then taken off in the morning and I've just been like almost blinded, especially at the beach. I like can't even see him like trying to make my way there. That's definitely, definitely recommend this guys. Um, Mindfold.com, you gotta check one out. I'll put a link in the description. Another thing, um, a problem I'm having, oh, this is a bit more of a problem I'm having right now. Maybe you guys can help me out a little. Noise. Sleeping at night, besides the light, there's always noise pollution. Whether we're parked on the side street, there's like cars whizzing past throughout the night that tend to wake me up. I think I'm a light sleeper. In a lot like this, we're in just like a parking lot now. Cars coming and going people setting off fireworks, um, people talking loud on the phone. Actually, last night, would you believe, a car came in, it must have been like 4 a.m. I think Taylor said it was 4.20, you know. They were talking on a speakerphone, and the speakerphone in their car was so loud, 
We couldn't really hear the person talking, but we could hear the speakerphone so loudly. Plus, you've got like the typical US stereotype of people just coming through blasting music. That's like very American, I think. And so between those things, you know, if we're trying to go to bed at 10, people are still doing that sort of thing till usually, sometimes after midnight, you know. So yeah, and then obviously you wake up in the morning and people are already moving around at like seven. We want to sleep until like eight or nine. So another thing I want to get into is like some kind of earplugs. I do have a set here. These are just like your generic, you know, you're like using power tools type earplugs. If anyone has a recommendation of like a nice comfortable set of earplugs that you can preferably lay on your side when you're sleeping and use, let us know in the comments because that'll probably help me out. If, you, if they look good, I'll probably buy them and try them out because that's another issue I'm really having. And I know, I don't know for sure, but I haven't tried them, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna like these. I think they're gonna get uncomfortable and then I think they're going to be like, you know, just like, I won't be able to sleep on my side and I think they're probably just gonna come out of my ears. Which, you know, sometimes this actually comes like up off my face. I've noticed that I'm less likely to have it come off in the mornings when it's brighter. And maybe my body's like, like, subconsciously trying to keep it on because it knows how much light pollution there is. I'm not too sure. Another recommendation is like, oh man, like, you need a big bed, like, especially if there's gonna be a few of you. So you all know what our bed looks like and it's way too small. So we're kind of like always cuddling. There's never quite enough space. So if you're sleeping with your partner in your van and you're considering, considering a Ford Transit like us, I think the bed needs to be the full width of the van. You know, ours pro isn't quite, ours is like almost. Probably we miss out on a foot, maybe almost, almost, maybe almost two feet. And it's just too small. So if you can do it somehow, I'd recommend on having that bed extend all the way out. I mean, you're gonna have to have it extend if you wanna be able to kind of move around in your van during the day. So yeah, you're gonna have to have it like extend right out. But that's definitely what I would recommend. It will be, way 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 more comfortable for you to sleep at night for us i feel like sleeping with taylor it's great don't get me wrong but neither of us get quite the quality of sleep that we get when we sleep solo like i can sleep solo in this van and be a lot more comfortable and I'm, i know taylor can too we've had a few like instances where we've been she's stayed at a friend's place or her mom's and i've slept in the van vice versa and it's been a lot a lot better so that was that's like another thing i would recommend another little van tip is i always like to have water right next to me when i sleep because i like to like grab a little drink throughout the night and you got to make sure if you're using if you're using nalgene bottles to pee in like we do that you empty them before you go to bed and we still get lazy sometimes and then you're in the middle of the night you need to pee and the jars are full and then you're just like stuffed then what are you gonna do so don't forget that one too Anyway, I think that's about all. Any other van tips for sleeping that I've missed, Taylor? I think she's probably been listening in. I've been listening a bit. Um, when you're doing the van build, definitely sound dead in the van. I, I don't know if you mentioned editing. that. But I think that would make a big difference, um, just so you don't hear as outside as much. Um, other things you could do, make it really dark in the van, just to help you sleep better. Um, Find a good parking spot that's not at a park. <laughs> True. Park on like a quiet street where no one's gonna bother you or start their cars in the middle of the night. I found that if you sleep in the neighborhoods, it's usually a lot quieter than sleeping at a business. Um, it's hard to find that balance though, isn't it? Between yeah. a dark, quiet spot that you feel safe in and then, you know, a lot that's gonna be busier, like a Walmart parking lot or something like that. True. That's gonna, it's gonna be feel safer, but it's also gonna maybe be busy all night with like late night Walmart clientele. Yeah, and just other general like sleep tips. I mean, try to do something relaxing before bed. Oh, um, yeah. Try to get the temperature. Practice good what in you van. preach. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, if you can get the temperature kind of decent in the van too, you're gonna be less uncomfortable throughout the night. That's true. Actually, we picked up a thermometer it's only a cheap one i got from lowe's that's actually been really cool to get an idea of how hot it's in it is in the van and then how it is compared to outdoors so it's giving me a bit more of an idea of 
what to expect for different temperatures and what sort of settings I might need the fan set to and stuff like that. It's cool to become more aware, you know, of like the, the temperatures and things. And speaking of like winding down before bed, I like to try and get off my phone, I don't know, like half an hour, it's like 15 or so minutes before bed. It's sometimes hard to do, I don't always do it, definitely not. I feel like I do it more than half the time though and I, the way I think about it is I just, I just think like my phone's not going anywhere, the world's still going to be there tomorrow so I just switch it off and just put it down. You know, it's, sometimes it can be difficult to do but that's sort of what I aspire to do and it just helps me relax, you know, and I like to get to bed by 10 and I found, especially lately, I'm not too sure why, it's a little bit harder for me to get to sleep. Taylor might stay up a little bit later than me and I'm still awake by the time that I've picked up on the fact that she's gone to sleep. But I think I've just come, become comfortable with the idea that as long as I'm laying down, resting with my eyes shut, my heart rates become lower, then I still am getting some degree of rest, whether I'm actually still awake or not. And so I just try and focus on that. I try and calm my mind instead of thinking like, oh, I can't sleep. Like, should I do something? Why can't I sleep? This is a problem. What's wrong? I just try and lay there and think like, it doesn't matter either way. I'm still resting and I just try and stay calm. And usually that works for me. It works best at night. It's a bit of a problem for me if I wake up early in the morning around like 5, 6 a.m. if I get woken up by something because that's a time where it's almost time to get up anyway and that it's a bit more difficult for me to get to sleep then. But I usually end up just like lying there and calmly and eventually it gets to the point where I start hassling Taylor a little bit and like talking to her and then that usually wakes you up, hey Taylor? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have as much sleeping problems as Matt. Like I, Oops. I'm not as sensitive to noise, so I usually fall asleep quicker and stay asleep more than Matt does, I feel That's like. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Taylor could pretty much sleep through the whole day if I gave her the chance, I think. Yeah, that's probably true. Definitely if she went to bed late, but even if she hadn't. Yeah, that being said, like, I don't know, sleep in the van just isn't that restful for me. I yeah. sleep a lot better in a house. Yeah. I don't really know how to get around it, but I think a better, more comfortable Bigger bed, bed, a more yeah. comfortable environment, that could really help, but... Sometimes it can just be hard to sleep good in the van. We got four inch foam. It's not thick enough. Don't go the four inch foam unless it's like a higher density because ours compressed so much. What I ended up doing is when we bought the Instant Pot, I used that cardboard to put under the bed to give it a little bit more support because obviously the slits, I guess, in the bed, I could feel those bumps, especially around my, my ass when I slept and it was so uncomfortable. I don't think you felt it though. I didn't feel it as much, no. Yeah. That probably tops it off though, hey. Taylor's right about the sound deadening too. If anyone knows like the brands and stuff for like sound deadening, if you've done it in your van, let us know. I'm just interested for like future van endeavors. Because it's I figured that normal insulation for heat would also do sound. But from what I've heard lately, that's they're like different things. So if anyone knows, let us know in the comments. But I think we'll leave it at that. Yep. What do you think, Taylor? Sounds good to me. Cool. Thanks for watching the video. We successfully distracted Taylor from her study. <laughs> She's trying to get four hours a day and it's struggling right now. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.